Welcome back, scholars. Today, we're going to take a very brief look at some of the key vocabulary and notation you'll encounter during your in-depth study of circles. Let's dive right in. First, let's formally define circle. That is the set of all points of fixed distance from a given point, which is referred to as the center. In the figure here, we have a circle named O. The distance from the center of a circle to any point on the circle itself is referred to as its radius. This will usually be written with a lowercase italic r. Let's keep moving. Next up, we have a chord, which is simply any line segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. In orange, we have segment AC, denoted with a bar over the endpoints A and C. Note that this chord does not go through the center of the circle. However, it is possible to have a chord that does pass through the center of the circle. That's actually what we call a circle's diameter. In purple, we have a chord AB, which passes through the center point, making that purple segment a diameter. A diameter is a straight line, making 180 degrees. It is also twice the length of the circle's radius. In green, you'll see what is referred to as a tangent line, labeled with a lowercase cursive L. A tangent line has several interesting properties. However, its key defining trait is that it contacts a circle at one and only one point. It is also the case that the angle formed between the tangent line and a radius drawn to the point of tangency, that is, the point where the tangent line contacts the circle, will be a right angle or 90 degrees. Finally, we have a second green line, labeled M, which is referred to as a secant line. This line passes through the circle, intersecting it exactly twice. Let's take a look around the circle now at arcs. An arc is part of the curve of a circle named for its endpoints. We don't refer to the distance around the circle as a perimeter. Rather, it's called the circle's circumference. An arc is just a fraction or part of a circle's circumference. If you look carefully at the path traced between points A and C, you may notice that there are two ways to get there. There's the shorter way, following the green path, and there's the longer way, following the red path. The larger arc, or any arc greater than 180 degrees, is referred to as a major arc while the shorter arc, or any arc less than a semicircle, that is 180 degrees, is referred to as a minor arc. You may wish to use more specific notation here to reference arc AC, depending on whether you are referring to the major or minor arc. In this case, go with three-point notation to make things more clear. Let's add point B to the green path. Now, arc ABC unambiguously refers to the minor arc. We have just a few more terms to look at. You've already seen angles on their own or as part of a collection of polygons. We can also describe angles in circles, which will be our focus for the next several lessons. A central angle is one in which the angle's vertex lies at the center of the circle. The angle can be measured in degrees or radians. The rays of that central angle create two intercepted arcs, one minor and the other major. Arcs can be expressed as a measure, such as degrees, or as a length, such as centimeters. An inscribed angle is one in which the vertex lies on the circle, not on its center. There are many ways to generate inscribed angles or combinations of central and inscribed angles, a few of which are pictured here. For example, the angle indicated in orange is an inscribed angle with a measure x degrees. On the other hand, the angle labeled in red is a central angle with its vertex on the center of the circle, point A. Its measure is 2x degrees. Lastly, it's possible to form angles between two chords, two secants, tangents, or a combination of these. That wraps up our introduction to circles, circle vocabulary, and notation. In the next few lessons, we'll look in depth at angles, arcs, and segments, as well as situations when these features interact. Thanks for watching.